All right, let's get serious. I'm, I got to take off my glasses for this. So, you know, a lot of crypto hype out there. It's actually pretty easy to make money uh, in cryptocurrency if you haven't experienced that already. So the big question that all of us might have, maybe for some expert traders you follow, or maybe some YouTubers, or maybe someone that you take your information from, or whatever the case is, is it real skill? Like, are we getting these multiples? Because obviously there's a lot of facts out there. People are proving things. Are we getting these multiples because we're actually good? Or are we getting these multiples because we got in early? Is there still potential in cryptocurrency to 100 extra money? This is going to be the series where I explore this topic by actually testing it for myself. This is not theory. This is not something I did in 2017. This is now. I'm going to turn $1,000 into $100,000. Keep watching. What's going on, everybody? Alex back with another video, and I've been holding off on this series for a very long time. I know people want it. I know people want to learn how to 100 extra money and then copy my trades for themselves, even though I tell you to stay away from that as much as you possibly can. This is why I've been holding off. I do not want people to get wrecked or get misled with the wrong information, but I decided it's time. I think it's time uh, for me to publicly display that the multiples of 100X are possible in cryptocurrency. Now, I was gonna do like a thousand to 10,000 series, uh, but to be honest, a wise man once told me, whatever your goal is, 10 exit. So if my goal is to make $10,000, I'm going to shoot for $100,000. If I come up short, well, I know for a fact the short is gonna be more than $10,000. So again, I'm gonna to try to 100X my money in this video series. We're gonna talk about more exactly the strategy. I think that's the most important part that you need to understand. It's gonna be more about strategy, how I'm looking at it. 10X is probably more realistic, but 100X is not out of the question. I've done it before, let me prove it to you. As you can see here, it's kind of empty because I don't keep my money in here anymore. But as you, if I go over here to Ethereum, let's go to Portfolio, Ethereum right here. And I go into my history, I'm not, trying to show everything. But if I go into my history, scroll all the way at the bottom, you can see I've been purchasing cryptocurrency for a very long time. We are going to trial and error this and I'm going to publicly do it. But again, as you can see, $10 Ethereum, right? I was purchasing it 10, in some cases, $7. As you can see, we just keep scrolling up. I mean, this is not the only account I had at the time either. It's definitely possible. If we come over to Ethereum right here, you can see this is around the time I was purchasing it, in December, 2016. And look at this, you know, percent increase. This is 34,603% increase. So technically, this is way more than 100x. This is uh, 300 and something x. So moving forward, it is possible. People have done it. I'm sure you've seen it before. Uh, we're just going to try to replicate it publicly. And that's the hard part, right? So just a couple of things I'm going to disclose here for you guys so you understand I'm coming from an open, honest, transparent place. And maybe you'll respect it and drop a like or share this video with somebody after I tell you this right here. Okay. None of the coins I'm talking about in this video or any of these videos in this video series or ever in my channel ever will be a paid sponsor. If we come over here to the FTC website, I am clearly explaining and letting the public know that I know that if you endorse a product of social media, your endorsement message should make it obvious when you have a relationship. So I'm clearly stating that I know the rules and regulations of promoting products. And I'm telling you right now, this is not or any ever going to be a paid promotion. And if I did get paid for it, I would have to clearly disclose it either in the description or in this video right here. Okay. The reason I'm doing this is because I want to separate myself. Some people do not do this. What If I was actually getting paid, this would be 100% illegal. So I'm telling you right now, it's legal because I do not get paid by any of them. All the money I make is from my business relations and my business relations only. I do not have any stake in the company except for the actual purchases that I make with my own physical money. Just to separate myself and make it a little bit interesting for other people that might be doing the same challenge, uh, I will not try to manipulate anybody. I never tried to manipulate anyone. This is complete, total, honest truth. You guys know the style of my videos. So again, if you appreciate that, feel free to subscribe, uh, share this with a friend or whatever the case is. So, so before we get into you know what's going on, this is how the structure is going to go. And I'm not going to put timestamps either because I want people to watch the full thing and get complete information and just not partial information. Let me explain to you why I'm making this series. Um, and maybe you can relate or not relate, whatever. Okay. Number one, I actually think I could do it. 
Okay. I actually think I could publicly show that I can hundred X my money with cryptocurrency. I think it's possible. I've done it in the past. I think it's a little bit harder being that the altcoin season is shorter. Now, if you would have asked me to do this six months ago, it would have been much easier. Um, but I still think I can actually hundred X my money now it might not be a reality. It might not be statistically likely, but I still think I could do it. Reason number two, I want to bring more people into crypto. And this is what a lot of, for, believe it or not, these videos are very exciting and people they want these videos all day. That's like, this is one of the most requested topics I've ever gotten in cryptocurrency. So again, share this with somebody so that you can help your friend get into crypto. This is the perfect opportunity for them to see the true growth potential of this volatile market. You can make leaps and bounds your portfolios. My portfolio is already like since the beginning of the year, 38 X. Okay. We have out competed like a lot of people that are quote unquote smart, right? So just understand cryptocurrency is an asymmetrical opportunity and this is a good time to share and show the advantages of this market. Also, it might be a little bit weird, but I know people want, right, to make money with no effort at all. So you guys watching this content, is my way of ethically bribing you into the proper information. Why do you guys think I don't put timestamps? I want you guys to get the complete scope and actually learn something. Shut the f up. Now let's talk about the risks, the part that nobody wants to talk about. They just want me to get directly to the coin so they could buy it tomorrow or in the next five minutes. <laughs> no, we're not going to do that. We're going to talk about the risks involved. Okay. The fact that I'm publicly disclosing this information will make my decisions less accurate, most likely, right? pressure, right? The added pressure of me being correct is going to sway my decisions. Now, I will say I've been doing it for a while anyways, right? I have my fundamental secrets group as well as been talking about cryptocurrencies on the internet for a long time. And maybe some of you have already made money off of some of the benchmark information I give you guys to do your own research. Maybe you guys got into Chainlink when I was talking about it a year and a half ago. Maybe you got into like Filecoin when I was talking about it like eight months ago, right? Some of this, these plays, you know, I've done publicly already, but Doing it on this extent is going to be a little bit harder. So just understand that. Here's another weird factor most people don't think about. Being that I'm starting with only $1,000, right? I can't really dollar cost average. A big part of my strategy is bringing new liquidity into your portfolio so that you can even out the volatility. So for you, if you're trying to do something similar to me, just remember when you're playing with $1,000, you know, you just got to, it's high risk. You got to jump into them. There's going to be no way you can dollar cost average. And when the price drops 30%, you will feel the full effect of that 30%. Now, if you have liquidity on the sideline and you use a dollar cost average strategy, you could just buy it back, right? You could buy more um, to increase the chance of you making money. But in this case, we do not have that element. Also, one thing I want to be very clear about, $1,000 is not a lot of money to me. Now, I'm not trying to be prideful. I'm not trying to showboat. I'm just saying it's the truth. This is less, far less than 1% of my portfolio. My portfolio is in the upper seven figures. The point I'm trying to make is I'm going to focus more on my portfolio. My big portfolio will get the vast majority of my attention. For this $1,000 portfolio, if there was a situation where I had to pick which one I'm gonna focus on, it's gonna be on the bigger portfolio. So that's another thing you guys have to take in consideration. $1,000 might mean a lot more to you guys than it does to me. So take those variables in consideration when you decide to just copy and paste somebody's portfolio. And this is the same thing with every you know trade 100 to a thousand video right this is for all these 10x videos it's going to be the same risk involved also i've seen i've heard people saying they're going to just copy my trades with like 100k i'm using 10 i'm using one thousand dollars there's a completely different strategy when you're playing with 100k versus a thousand dollars so again replicating this for yourself is going to be extremely difficult unless you, you know these variables and you make your own decisions. You need to know these variables and you need to use this research as a benchmark and then make your own decisions. I will say it a thousand times until you guys are brainwashed into actually doing it. And another factor, all my research I typically give to the fundamental secrets, right? I'll give them my research. But in these videos, guys, just understand that it's going to take me approximately a day to two days to actually edit them and upload. So in a lot of cases, you are going to be behind. I just want to be very clear. Again, this is the same case with pretty much every single YouTuber. They make videos ahead of time. So you'll always, if you think about chess, be a step behind. You will always be a move behind if you're just trying to copy and not think about you know, your actual strategy. You're just copying people. This is the truth. Also, being that it's only a thousand dollars and I want to hundred exit, my goal here again is to hundred exit. If I'm setting myself to hundred exit, I am going high risk, high reward. So again, I'm not perfect. I pick 10 projects. 
Sometimes there's a scam. Sometimes there's a rug pull, right? They they trick me just as much as they trick anybody else. I am a human just like you. Obviously, the, the goal here is to be right more than I'm wrong. But when you go into these 100x opportunities and you're going into market caps below uh, you know, $100 million or something like that, it's high risk, high reward, especially the fact that $1,000 doesn't mean that much to me. And especially the fact that I have to 100 exit in a short period of time before the bull run ends, I'm going risk. And I, and I think this is probably the only way to really do it. These plays are gonna be you know up there on the risk spectrum. So just take that in consideration. And just to piggyback off that, okay? Some of these trades, okay, will be a lot longer than you think. It's not gonna be Alex day trading and clicking buttons everywhere and like, oh, drop the video today, drop the video tomorrow, you know, on trading this portfolio. Sometimes it might take me a month for a trade to play out the way I wanted to. So consider subscribing and watching my other videos that I talk about all coins so that you can not get bored and just wait for me to drop a video on how to trade my thousand dollar portfolio to a hundred thousand dollars, guys. I'm just giving you the full perspective, right? <laughs> this is the most honest and transparent YouTube. I want you guys to know every single little detail. If you could just put all these variables in your head and understand what's going on, then I can feel comfortable making this video for you. It might not get a whole bunch of likes. People might not view this video, but I'm doing it for my community. And if you appreciate that, show it somehow. Guys, also leave me a comment in the description below on what video you want me to make next, because I'm trying to give you guys what you want and, you know, really help you out. Yeah. Let me know guys in the comment section below what video you want me to make next. And if there's a whole bunch of people saying the same thing, I'm, I'm making that video tomorrow. So do it now. I'll wait. I'm just kidding. Let's jump into the actual video though. I know you guys are getting so bored right now. If we look at the Ethereum chart, we could see that we are clearly in a bull run. I mean, this is where we are right here. This is a longer time frame. But if we go to the total market capitalization of all cryptocurrency, we broke out of this wedge here. Okay, it's an ascending wedge. Now, historically, there's supposed to be a reversal pattern. So it should have broke to the downside. It broke to the upside. Not only did it break to the upside, but in the past couple of days, we've been making support. So if we go to the four hour, you can see we've been making support. This is really good. We almost broke out here. Then we came back, tested again, support. You guys know when resistance turns into support, that's extremely bullish. So the reason I'm saying this is because we have to make sure the market conditions are set up for our success. If you're buying an altcoin when the total market capitalization is going down, you're going to lose my, your money. And I don't need to tell you to do research to know that. You will lose your money if this chart is going down. I don't care what coin you are in. Total market capitalization of all cryptocurrency, okay? So we have to make sure this is gonna continue up and I do think we're gonna get up to at least this point right here. So this buy call that we're about to make today is gonna start from this point. We need to start here and then work our way back. If you wanna get crazy, you're supposed to start from macro conditions. We don't have enough time for the video. So I do that on my own time. But macro conditions of cryptocurrency look pretty good. We got a total two right here. So we pull up the total two. It's giving me a similar pattern. It depends on how you draw this, right? So if we're drawing it from the tops here, then I would say we broke out. Now, if we bring this out to the daily though, you can see that there's kind of a wicks being created there. So if you draw from the wicks, it looks like we're rejecting off that. Now, personally, when I draw these triangles, I typically try to stay away from the wicks because it doesn't show strength, but you can see clearly see an indication right here that there's some type of resistance right at this point. So just pay attention to that. Once we break out of that, I'll get more confidence on the daily when it comes to altcoins and cryptocurrency. What I'm trying to play out for you guys is the altcoin season. I've been talking about altcoin season a lot, right? Now, another thing, we, we have a more detailed video about this and it gets crazy. So I want you guys to watch that in your own time. But right now, let me show you something. If you look at the top 100 altcoins versus Bitcoin dominance, as you can see, we broke out. We broke out of a three, four year trend. This three, four year trend. Now, let me just be clear. When this chart goes up, the top 100 altcoins are doing better than Bitcoin dominance. When the chart goes down, Bitcoin is doing better in dominance. So we broke out of a trend with altcoins continuing to the top, which is big in itself, right? That's huge, right? This is a four year thing right here. Now that's big. The fact that we broke out of this previous resistance is also big. And then the fact that we have this crazy alignment. Again, I have another video that talks about this in greater detail, but look at this, right? Berlin hard fork is happening and approximately two days, which is exactly at this arrow, right? As well as the Coinbase IPO, which is one of the most big historical events for cryptocurrency credibility that we have ever experienced ever. It's gonna be one of the biggest events ever. Do not underestimate it. This gray line here is 
the halving, the Bitcoin halving, which we guys know is a huge catalyst in cryptocurrency, one of the biggest catalysts in cryptocurrency. This halving event is massive. Now, let me show you something. We made support here and exactly 248 days later was the halving event. Then after the halving event, we have exactly 238 days to where we make support again. Now, the reason I'm showing you that is because when we bring this back over here to 2016, which was the last time we had this major rally, look at this major rally right here in all coins, right? Look again, we see the exact same thing. I'm the only YouTuber that's talking about this right now. And people are going to start copying me very soon. Just understand it came from here first. As you can see right here, this arrow is showing Microsoft partnering with consensus, which we made support here, right? Exactly 200. And 48 days later, let me come back over here for you guys so you understand how crazy this is. 248 days to the halving. Exactly 248 days later, we have the halving event. Then 235 days later, we take off right here. Now, I've talked about this before, and we're taking in this case, we didn't take off, we didn't break through or go parabolic, but we made support. So the difference is that we made support here, but in this case, we went parabolic. But I, I can, there's an easy explanation for that. There was a DAO or decentralized autonomous organization hack, one of the biggest ones, an Ethereum fork. And if you guys know how cryptocurrency works, essentially when Ethereum forks, people flock to Ethereum. People were flocking to this to get the free cryptocurrency, get Ethereum Classic and the regular Ethereum. And then this made it more exaggerated. So in this case, there was an exaggeration because there wasn't a fork or was there? Yeah, there's a fork coming up soon. It just happened to happen at a different time. The Berlin hard fork. You guys see a lot of this lining up. If this condition, I know it takes a while, but if these conditions are not met, if we don't have an accurate altcoin season, how can I make this video and purchase altcoins with a straight face in front of you guys? I know there's other people on the internet that want to lie about things just so we can get clicks, but I'm going to be, this is why I've held off on altcoin videos because it's not the time. It's high risk. To buy all coins right here, you risk going down very far. So I was not comfortable with getting a whole bunch of people wrecked. Maybe somebody else was, but I wasn't, right? And that's just a complete, total, honest truth. Now, again, one more thing to note. What I'm seeing is that a lot of these cryptocurrencies, and I have an article for it. I don't have it in this video. I have in some other altcoin videos. But basically, a lot of the market cap is, is going to mid to low caps. So... It's actually a good time, in my personal opinion, to start getting into mid low caps to make some massive potential. Because if you understand how this market works, we have high market cap coins. So if I come to CoinGecko, let me explain this. We have high market cap coins like Ethereum, Binance Chain, XRP, which by the way, Binance Chain is great, man. It's making, making a lot of money. I don't know if it still has some in its engine, but we'll see. Uh, regardless of that, the medium cap, we're getting to the bottom here, right? Um, these will give you more multiples. They'll give you more percentage gains. So I think it's important uh, to strategically put yourself in a situation, if, as, especially if you're investing in low market cap altcoins to where we're, we're hitting that point. We're getting that threshold where these low market caps are going to pop off because you could easily just pick one of these coins and do very well. But again, we're trying to 100x. You're not going to 100x your money holding Ethereum, Binance Chain, XRP, Cardano, Polkadot, Uniswap. You're not going to 100x your money anymore. Now, if this was a year ago, maybe you might have, right? So the goal here is to try to find coins that on the second or third page, that will rise to top 10. That's where we can get an easy 20X. Easy 20X, we could call it three or four of those, we'll be, we'll be good. We'll, we'll be close to that 100X opportunity. So again, I'm trying to get 100X. So this requires me to be a little bit more aggressive than other, other people on the internet. Um, this is exactly, this is the only way. If somebody's telling you to buy something on this first page, you will not 100X your money. And I can show you exactly why. Because everything on this first page is $1 billion. Everything's on this page is $1 billion. So the likelihood of it getting to top 10 would only give you a, a you know, it will give you a, a pretty good jump, but nothing like crazy. Look, this is all 1 billion. If you get up to here, you doubled your money. If you get up to here, you four X your money, right? If you get up to here, we're getting into the five, 10 X's. And then if you get up to here, which is highly unlikely, then we'll get like a 20 X. But if we're getting, you know, for example, to page three or four, and we make it up there with a 200 or $100 million market cap, if we make it up to a billion dollars, that's a off the bat 10X. And then we're on the same page. So we get that extra 10, 15X if we're catching coins over here that move their way up. Now there is a chance that some of these coins would never move their way up to a top 10. Like we might see like this, this uh, lineup here, we see the top 10 or top 20 might be the same. They might just fight each other for a long time. Uh, it's unlikely because if you look back in 2017, you know, 
they, they, they do shift a lot. But I will say that that's a chance that you need to take into consideration when you're investing in low market cap altcoins. Now, there's a couple of things I want to be very clear. Let's, let's kind of stay away from this because there's some cognitive biases that I know are going to pop up when looking at these cryptocurrencies. The first one's the endowment effect. Basically what it is, it's finding that people are more likely to retain an object that they own than acquire the same object they do not own it. So basically, when you buy these cryptocurrencies, and it's something a lot of people fall into, and it's going to be amplified by like my audience, right? You guys are going to tell me I'm wrong or right. Like I promise my comment section is going to be hit with some negative or positive news. It happens every time. I'm not, I'm going to try not to fall into this. And you should always look at this is my ethical bribe to you to try to uh, teach you something, right? Just because I own the coin, I'm going to move. I don't care about the transaction fees. That's another thing you guys are taking into consideration. A lot of these uh, 1,000 to 10,000 things, they have the luxury of jumping on something like Voyager. I don't. We're going to be jumping on decentralized protocols. I'll explain exactly why. But uh, yeah, long story short, don't get attached. We're trying to make some money. And I know I see it all the time. People are getting uh, like when I got into Chainlink, I called it a year and a half ago. I'm getting calls from people like, man, you, you, we made so much money off Chainlink. And, and I sold it. I sold the vast majority of my Chainlink a while ago at the top. Don't get emotional. We're going to move. If you especially if you want this 100x, you got to move. Don't let the endowment effect, which is a cognitive bias which is like a primal instinct in our head. Take advantage of you. Control it, take a deep breath, and let's make some money. Let's go to the second one. As you can see here, a sunk cost trap. The sunk cost trap refers to a tendency for people to irrationally follow through on an activity that does not meet their expectations. Okay, so a really, really good, really important kind of example that could potentially happen from this is just following me. Don't just follow me. Okay. If you feel like the project's not for you, the project's not for you, wait for the next coin call. Okay. You don't need to get in just because I'm getting in and you need to follow my strategy exactly because my title says uh, 1,000 to 100K. That does not need to happen. You could turn 1,000 to 100K without following this video. All right. And the chances are, again, like I've said a thousand times, are low. So don't get attached. It's kind of the same thing, but in a different way. Status quo bias. These are all referring to not being adaptable. So essentially, you can kind of put a blanket statement over these cognitive biases, I would say, in, the, in our case, not in general. In our case, you could by saying just be adaptable, move in and out, right? So the status quo bias is an emotional bias, a preference to the current state of affairs. The current baseline or status quo is taken as a reference point, and any change from that baseline is perceived as a loss. For example, we're calling all coin season like crazy. Right. Everybody here is calling all coin season. We got these guys, you know, coming out the woodworks, um, making these all coin calls. If it's not all coin season, if it happens to not be all coin season, don't get attached. Jump back into Bitcoin. Right. And the chart you want to look at is the top 100 all coins versus BTC. Watch my other videos for that. Let's get into the point you guys are all waiting for. Right. I know I've been uh, lollygagging. I want to give you the whole thing. No timestamps. All right. So if we come over here, uh, there's one thing I want to show you on Mazari really quickly. Let me just refresh the page. You can see that there's a couple of ecosystems, right? And from these ecosystems, I'm going to start making my uh, or doing my fundamental analysis. So if I click right here, seven day, and I put it to like, for example, the last 30 days, or we could do three months, let's do one month. You can see that the vast majority of money are going to centralized exchanges. But in the one point, the one month, Web3 started to pop off. And I would say in DeFi summer, a lot of the money went to DeFi. But um, in the last month, Web3 got a lot. But look at the last three months, for example. If we click right here and we do three months, you can see it's about even with DeFi. So the, the buy I'm making today is gonna be in the Web3 infrastructure because I think it's a little bit undervalued, obviously, you can see from here, um, from you know DeFi. Also, I definitely see a lot of people going more decentralized. This is why the centralized exchanges are winning because it's just easier. I do see people start you know transitioning to decentralized exchanges, DeFi and Web3, right? But I don't wanna buy something that's overvalued. I think Web3 is the most undervalued sector right now. I think it's probably bigger than DeFi. it's the more i guess you could say infrastructural part of DeFi. like they're gonna need to, if they want to be completely decentralized they're gonna need web3 um so we're gonna be jumping to some some of those coins because some of those coins have been doing really well uh at least right now until something changes right so make sure you stay up to date but just to jump into the actual coin then i'll explain to you exactly why it's called rad now the first buy call in this video is going to be rad okay let's go over the project a little bit but let me explain something really quickly. So we have centralized exchanges. I'll put a C for centralized exchanges, a whole bunch of centralized exchanges. And then we have like basically everything else. So we have like a whole, all these coins being created now. Okay. Just for simplicity's sake, the centralized exchanges in my personal opinion, um, is not the big part, right? The access, you gotta get access to the low market caps. What happens is these coins get created, right? By developers. 
and they have a certain amount of credibility because we all know there's a lot of scams in cryptocurrency. The credibility um, is, is really important. And a lot of them come from the researchers of the centralized exchanges. That's why you see when a coin gets listed to Coinbase or something like that, it moons in price because it gives a lot of credibility to that coin. So these centralized exchanges in a lot of ways are behind because I'm jumping into these protocols before they even get on the exchange, right? Which gives me a lot more upside potential. So just to be clear, I know other YouTubers are trading on, for example, Voyager or Binance, but I don't have the liberty of doing that because I'm trying to 100x my money. So when it comes to transaction fees, the way I'm going to mitigate it, at least when we're first starting, is to get into one coin and one coin only. We're going to do one transaction fee in, one transaction fee out, try to make as much money as we possibly can. And then from there, I can diversify. So I have to be right about this fourth coin. I have to be extremely confident about this first coin because it could take forever. And this trading series will be like three years old, right? This first coin is pretty strong. Uh, I will admit one of the better ones I've seen in the last 30 to 60 days. Uh, so I'm pretty confident about it. RAD is going to do well, um, especially I think it's going to do well long term. Like if I was playing with my own portfolio, my actual account, I would probably hold this coin for a long time, like five years. I, as long as we don't see any like huge red flags, this is a coin I, I would hold for a long period of time. Um, but yeah, from a realistic perspective, though, I think short term and long term, they're doing they're, this is going to do well. People are going to flock to it because they have a hair on fire problem use case, which is a decentralized GitHub. OK, so if you guys don't know what's going on, because I know a lot of people don't basically the new Internet or what's happening for the last decade is highly reliant on something called open source code. So open source code is essentially me making a project and then giving everybody the instructions on how to make it again. They can technically copy and paste the code and run it themselves, change a couple of things and let it go. But I know it sounds bad because people are just copying your innovative product. But for decentralized systems and for innovation, it's actually really good because what happens is people can see your code and fix it. Right. They can fix your security issues. They can put more on top of it. They can put their code and combine it with your code and it basically makes innovation 10 times more explosive. Hence why there's a platform called GitHub and it's the most highly used. It's number four, I believe, uh, when it comes to website traffic in this space. Like when it, or is it four? No, it's, it's constantly moving. Let me refresh this. Yeah, no, it's actually number four. Excuse me. So right here, you can see number four when it comes to how many people view, like millions of people are viewing GitHub and using it. Um, so it's definitely the the innovation platform of this decade. And for cryptocurrency, it's like everything, like everything's open source. That's the point of it. It's open, free, permissionless, decentralized. It's like power to the people. Problem with this is that GitHub specifically is kind of centralized. They have centralized servers. Sometimes they get hacked, right? The people of GitHub actually have control over the platform so they can do things like censor uh, other countries if they don't like another country, right? They can put regulation in. All the same problems that we have with money or anything else, it's the same thing with GitHub. But GitHub is an extremely innovative platform that everybody uses anyways, right? They really need it. This is where Radical comes in. Radical is essentially the decentralized version of that. Now, obviously, they take it a step further because de decentralization opens the gateway for more and more innovation. but this right here, what they're doing off the bat is strong. They're doing something very strong. Collaborate peer to peer, forget platforms, easily share your code with anyone without relying on a third party, right? Work securely offline. So that's the beauty too, because there's other platforms that you can technically get the decentralization and control at the same time. So there's basically something you have to sacrifice when, when you're making a platform like this. You either have to give GitHub the control or you have to make something that's hard to use, right? There's platforms that give you the decentralization and the control of the platform, but it's extremely hard to use. It's not fluent. It's, it's no one's gonna get excited about some boring code transferring website if it's not easy to use, right? So in this case right here, they seem to solve both problems. They give you the public and private key the same way you would have an actual wallet and whoever has the private key has access to the GitHub repository. So you actually own your infrastructure, right? Um, it's free forever, completely open source, available everywhere. And there's no restrictions. It's permissionless, just like cryptocurrencies. Create with your own community. Support and be supported. Uh, so they, that's crazy. They could literally uh, support each other and build off of each other's stuff. So like there's a protocol that you need really bad. You can literally pay these people to get an extra developer uh, to help you out in the end. So it's pretty much a whole big innovation bubble. Um, you know, and they're giving more control back to developers. They're making a whole new standard of code collaboration called Radical Link. Um, they have Git, which is 
basically extends from GitHub, peer-to-peer -peer discovery, giving distribution, virgin control. It's a new uh, superpower, but they put it on the blockchain, right? Harness the power of decentralized organizations and digital money. I think it's really interesting. Um, also, one thing to take in consideration uh, for me is that I'm waiting. Like, I think the hype's coming soon because in mid-2021, uh, they're going to get to the point where it gets serious and they're going to do something called social coding, which is like the big innovation of GitHub, in my personal opinion. Uh, code collaboration, as you know it, work better together with bug reporting, code reviews, and discussions, all locally hosted, okay, all on the blockchain without any centralized servers or anything. We're right here. They just launched their governance tokens. It's relatively new. I believe it's like less than three months old. Um, so this is where you get the undervalued uh, projects because look, Market cap's only 75 million, but this thing is strong. I'm telling you it's strong. But if you look at the team, for example, we have like X coders. This is one of the guys from SoundCloud, data science expert and an engineer. So that's pretty good credibility. If you're finding like massive credibility um, with low market cap, right? That's a, that's a good sign. Like, especially under hundred million, that's a really good sign. If we go to cloudhead.io, by the, by the way, this is the other guy, other founder. Um, I believe he's anonymous. I haven't looked too deep into him, but what I do know is that he has a lot, a lot of credibility and a lot of work under his uh, belt, about 17 years from my understanding. Uh, you can see the proof of code commits, uh, 1700 contributions in one year, uh, 3.1K followers. Like this guy is active and clearly has a history of doing exactly what he should be doing. If you open this, right, it explains a little bit more of exactly what he did. So you can verify it for yourself. But yeah, he has a lot of work under his belt. Uh, including a privacy preserving Bitcoin like kind and Rust. So he has a lot of experience with Rust. Um, yeah, credibility, pretty good when it comes to the actual co-founders and founders. They have like a little bit of a media as well. I believe they have a graphic designer. Um, they didn't look too much into that, but you know, they have a lot of credibility for being under 75 million market cap. That's all I got to say. They have, just to add to that, uh, Placeholder, basically one of the biggest funding platforms in cryptocurrency, they're one of the biggest. They have a lot of money. They can weed out BS, right? And they are investing in Radical as well. So that's something else to take in consideration. It's just adding to the credibility. It's not gonna be a rug pull. I'm pretty confident about this, right? Um, this is not something I just put together research. I've been researching it for a long time. Um, so again, our first buy is, is gonna be Radical, right? Where do I think it's gonna go? I think that's irrelevant. I think uh, my goal here is try to at least double this and take out 50% of the profits to buy something else, right? Because remember, we're trying to do a low transaction fee. So for the people that, you know, want to know exactly what I'm doing, I'm going to be trading on Uniswap because that's the only place you can get it. This is what I was trying to tell you guys. Now there's a couple of other exchanges you can get. MXC, right? You can go there or LB Bank or whatever. However, I've never even heard of these, but look at 24 hour volume. It's not that high. So you'll get your orders taken, but Uniswap's the best. It has the highest liquidity. That's what I'm doing. Transaction fees are gonna be about $47 in, $47 off. So the amount of rate I have is around $900. Um, again, you're losing off the back 10%, right? And I know there's other YouTubers that were jumping into, for example, um, centralized exchanges. Cause if you, if they had a centralized exchange, they do uh, MXC, but I just don't have an account there, right? But you know, it might be actually cheaper for you if you wanna go that route. It just depends on what price you can get it for. Cause the order book, it all depends on the order book. They can sell it for more expensive than Uniswap. But long story short, uh, I'm going to make this process easy for me so I can guarantee that I'm actually working on it. So I'm going to get it through Uniswap and some of the other coins I get are going to be on Uniswap. And that's another benefit to it. Just to give you guys a heads up, they're going to be listed on more exchanges. There's going to be more liquidity. Um, they're definitely, and you know, you guys know just from the news off of that, or just from the increased interest, sometimes buying things that are hard, it's easier to get in early. And then, you know, when it makes it easier for everybody else, you know, you get the rewards of doing things that are hard, right? So. Maybe that went over some people's heads, but let's look into more uh, why in what is Radical, right? It's a decentralized code collaboration network built on open protocols and enables developers to collaborate on code without relying on trusted intermediaries. Radical was designed to provide similar functionality to centralized code collaboration platform or forages while retaining Git's peer-to-peer -peer nature, building on what made distributed version control so powerful in the first place. So I said, we explained it like the same way every time. Now, what is it different from GitHub, okay? The Radical stack is an open source from top to bottom. There's no closed components. Every component of the Radical stack is auditable, modifiable, and extendable. And what that basically means is that it's more, there's more security, right? And that's not the only thing, but like they can change it um, and extend it. But long story short, you get the benefits of blockchain technology. So it just makes it 
uh, a lot better to be able to do it that way, right? Radical is built entirely on open protocols. There's no special servers, privileges, users, or companies in control of your collaboration. This is decentralization. Radical is based on a peer-to-peer -peer architecture instead of client server model decentralization. Uh, Radical is not global by default. Instead, the social graph of peers and projects you track to determines what content you see, interact with, and replicate, meaning you know, they're not going to just inhibit just the United States and GitHub, like United States people talking to only them, right? I'm pretty sure they have different versions of GitHub. I'm not a developer, so don't ask me uh, specifically that, but I will say they're, they're, they're saying it right here. That means that within projects, there isn't a single master branch that contributors merge into. Instead, peers maintain their own views of projects that can be fetched and merged by other peers via patches. Let's just kind of keep it pushing. So as you can see here, six, they're basically explaining that um, you know, there's, there's centralization when it comes to GitHub, like people own, they're like admins, right? I know you guys heard of admins. They have like basically the control. And in this case, we have decentralized organizations like DAOs. You guys know of DAOs. I'm seeing, I know you've heard of it in other projects. So it's like a voting mechanism to see what's going on, uh, to see where the rules are in place and any type of organization, right? So it's just open source. Their launch wasn't hundred percent fair, but it's a decentralized autonomous organization, which I think is, is big innovation. Uh, Radical is self-sustaining community-owned network, not a corporation. Its governance is organized by a token called RAD that lives on Ethereum, and that's the token. The governance token is what we are purchasing today, or I'm purchasing, not you. You're not purchasing it. Okay, why are we building this? Now, there's a couple of things that I just wanted to quickly highlight, and then we'll jump into more, some other things that I saw, like the product and the marketing. Um, but open source has become a standard for software development. We talked about that already. In addition, the federation, depending on domain names, which, okay, so basically... What they're explaining here is they have other, there is other platforms. It's so hard to get decentralized. This is what Web3 means, right? Because there's so many different like centralized kind of protocols on the internet right now. Um, and what they're claiming here is that you can get a decentralized, right? Here, domain names. They have decentralized domain names that cannot be seized by the government. In some cases, it has nothing to do with the individual platform like GitHub, for example. It's just the government that wants to restrict somebody on the other side of the world, right? They can't do that because the actual domain names themselves are decentralized. I read a little bit more of this. You guys can read it for yourself. Go to the website. They have a lot of information. This is another thing I thought was very interesting. When they give radical orgs, projects can maintain an audible and transparent history of project state on chain. So what that means, if you understand how blockchain technology works, they give you a public ledger and you could see the code on this public ledger. So every time, let's say for example, I wanna start a project. Of course you need to audit it. There's always an auditing process, but if you initially wanna start it, it will actually give your product credibility to be able to pull it from another product that everybody knows is already audited. And you can see all of this on the blockchain. Now, there's people that will claim, like for example, some projects now will say, hey, I pulled this code from Aave and I copied Aave, but how do you know they didn't change it, right? This makes it so that you don't have to audit. Well, you do have to audit every single time, but it makes it so that that initial process is a lot more smooth because the code is coming from a history. It's coming from a history of credibility. Uh, so this makes that process for the regular people that don't know how to recode like me and you, you know, it makes it easier and more simple to weed out the scams, right? So if it's coming from a history of decentralized, you know, uh, open source code and have you have the history of everybody that's copied it, whatever the case is, then you can definitely find more credibility that way, right? Here's a couple other things I wanted to read to you guys. Today, we're deploying our first generalized funding protocol on testnet designed to give developers a new way to sustain their open source work. They essentially allowed a stream of like a streaming service where you can send money to somebody on a consistent basis so they can fund each other. We talked about this earlier. Here's another thing I thought was really big. Easily managing a group of repositories or organization has become commonplace in our day-to-day -day code collaboration experience. Unfortunately, when restrained by the social model of centralized forages, organizations come with limitations. The admin model based on a single user with privileged access over the organization and its members is a significant limiting factor to projects and collectives that operate within a non-hierarchical uh, structure. It also poses challenges around security and trust, especially for communities organized over the internet. On radical, organizations rely on smart contracts instead of admins. So the privileges come from the public and private key. These contracts allow you to define the rules and permission around code bases in a trustless manner. If you already have a DAO or multi-sig on Ethereum, you'll be able to link into a radical org. That's big. That's big. If you don't, you'll be able to create one from, well, within Radical, leveraging the countless DAO models that exist on Ethereum today. With Radical Orgs, projects can maintain an auditable and transparent history of project state on chain. This enables new workflows around your main batch that is now anchored and secured on Ethereum. This is crazy. 
This can be used to trigger off-chain actions like the distribution of developer rewards, software releases, or any job you'd like. Yeah, it's crazy. I, I don't know, man. This really blew my mind. I've known about um, projects that have done this, but the amount of credibility they have behind it uh, really gives me confidence that they're actually going to be able to pull off what they're saying here. And the beauty is that they're not marketing that much, right? So this is a clear sign of demand. Seeded projects are people that are basically creating their projects that want to be seen, okay? This is like their seeding, their seedlings, whatever they call it, right? Look, seed node is running into replication issues due to a high influx of peers. What does that mean? There's a lot of developers moving onto this project very fast, and I can see why, right? It's just, it's just higher quality code. We talked about the team a little bit. Um, there's just a little bit more I wanted to jump into here uh, so you guys can see uh, who this guy is made of. This is a, one of the founders. It's a collection of open protocols where some of them are truly peer-to-peer -peer and some of them blockchain-based. All of them are bundled in one uh, user experience. Uh, there was a couple of things I wanted to show you guys. Radical extends Git with a gossip network. So you have a social experience around coding that is similar to GH FOSS model, but without centralized servers. So that's, that's interesting. I never thought of it that way. Here's another interesting thing he's talking about. A uh, private key for crypto identity and authority, big upgrade. It's a huge upgrade from GitHub. It also allows developers to be in control without losing connectivity to the rest of the network. That's interesting as well. Uh, they can control it. It's always on the blockchain, right? The current state of the world is stuck between having convenience in a community um, or having control. And they're, you know, kind of solving in the middle there, kind of both of them, right? Because you have the public and private key, you can make a smart contract with the rules and everybody knows the rules and the rules are set in stone and the governance model can change those rules, right? Radical Link gets its optimizations from Git, which is focused on active data and familiar with integration model. It doesn't even try to fight with these other services like Filecorn or Airweave, it complements them. So it's, they can kind of work together and they've already implemented with GRT. Uh, so, you know, they're definitely making headway there. And remember, this is all like decentralized Web 3.0. They're creating the infrastructure of the internet for real. DeFi is like a layer on top. It's like an application. This is actual infrastructure. So this is very like long-term and short-term type of play here. Uh, I mean, it is high risk because low market cap, but when it comes from an actual perspective of, you know, the ecosystem, it's pretty low risk. My favorite one is DAO controlled repos or radical orgs. They replace GH admins with smart contract. They allow or org to treat Ethereum as their main branch if they want that. We've already talked about that a couple of times. They are talking about the, you know, transaction fees as you can see here, but the layer two solutions are progressing fast. So layer two is already solving a lot of problems for NFTs like free NFT minting and transactions. I've seen it already, so it's crazy. Guys, we're gonna get better and better. Innovations are gonna come fast. And this is a big one. If you have a doubt today, you will be able to control a repo in a trust minimized way. If you don't, you'll be able to deploy a DAO or multi-sig from the app, something which in my opinion is much more powerful and secure than the admin model of centralized platforms. Additionally, users will be able to use Ethereum's existing financial infrastructure to program value flows that fit their needs in the same experience. Instead of a one size fit all model, Radical aims to give developers opportunity to leverage protocols as they see fit. This is great. I'm not gonna read all of this. I want you guys to go to his Twitter and go read it for yourself. I found him by just going to the actual Twitter of the protocol. They're following him, right? I couldn't find their team in any other way. So that's a couple of things I thought was very interesting. Um, another thing that gives me a lot of confidence and is actually a big one, we talked about placeholder investing, but Coinbase custody now supports deposits and withdrawal of RAD. Now, this is kind of a sign towards the right place because we know that Coinbase is, they're, they're putting on Web3, they're uh, adding to Web3 to their Coinbase Pro and Coinbase, and this is like an early sign. And you guys know, once they implement it into their actual trading service, it's a wrap. We know Coinbase knows what they're doing. It always pumps every single time. All I'm saying, guys, is extremely undervalued and there's a lot of support. They have a lot of support, a lot of credibility um, that we need to take advantage of for sure. So let's jump into some of the token distribution because this could be a big negative um, if they have like a bad token distribution, which when I look, um, not really. 50% um, of the total supply will be allocated to the community members and users over the same time through the network's treasury. So the treasury owns it. An open proposal to make 3.75% of the total supply available on balance of liquidity uh, for bootstrapping, which they had that event um, where people could have bought it for like a dollar and 50 cents or some crazy number. Develop resilient co uh, collaboration infrastructure that respects why a token. They went into it. I'm just trying to go over specifically this right here. So we have about 19% going to the team. That's pretty normal. 20% going to you know some early supporters or VC investors. 5% to the foundation. 2% to Cedars program. 4% to liquidity bootstrapping pool. 
uh, which is a seller's event. So the one thing I want you guys to see is that right here, uh, they're all locked up for a year. So it's going to be locked up till the end of 2021, which will allow us to get really involved and making a lot of money. Um, and they're not going to sell on us, right? We've seen it in some other protocols, I believe Audio or Audius. April 1st, which was uh, about two weeks ago, they dumped on the market. I don't know if they actually dumped or not, but the, the price dropped in proportion to the seating schedule. So we don't really see that. This is not going to be a problem in the future. So I think this is a good uh, vesting schedule, at least for us. Or not vesting, but uh, tokenomics is okay. It's not the it's not the best. It's not completely, you know, every the community gets 100%, but at least they have, you know, 50% 50, 50 plus and they have the vesting schedule. So yeah, long story short, guys, this coin... Uh, was that just came across my table inspired me to make this video because I'm actually um, really optimistic about the future of you know radical. I think uh, the decentralized you know model in general is great. Um, you can't just put everything decentralized nowadays. But when you're building something like this, where it's it could be like the bedrock of Web 3.0. This could be the innovation bedrock of you know coders. And I see a lot of people, a lot more people becoming coders nowadays. And and I think this is the perfect solution for them to guarantee the success of their code long term where nobody can manipulate it. Nobody can tell them what to do. Um, they can collaborate with other people and have that social effect of being able to solve problems immediately. And it gives the power to the people essentially, and, and it will give power to you. Uh, but yeah, that's it for this video. I have purchased my first thousand dollars, nine hundred dollars worth of this token about two hours ago. Uh, so, uh, you know, I have, I actually integrated it. I, I purchased some of my real portfolio too, just to give you guys a heads up, but I will be pulling out exactly because I have the transaction fees. They cost $47 a pop. I'll be pulling out the equivalent of 900, what, $906, um, and putting it into a wallet. And from there, again, I will update you guys with every single trade I make and turning this thousand dollars into a hundred thousand dollars. There's no like exit number whoever's telling you there's an exit number they're just telling you giving you false hope guys i just want this to go up at least five to yeah i want to double my money triple money my money maybe get it to a two billion dollar market cap where that'll be you know a solid gain and then from there take 50 percent out and find some other coins diversify um and then you know we can have that 100x potentially but it starts off with that initial boom we got to get at least like a 10 20x off of this coin so i can mitigate the transaction fees and it becomes worth it because if i'm moving too much right it's not going to become worth it. This is how I invest as well. This is we got the most percentages in my portfolio, which has allowed us to outcompete Bitcoin and Ethereum, cycle trading, uh, finding undervalued altcoins. And this is a clear undervalued altcoin, I would say. Um, and maybe you don't agree. If you don't agree, leave a comment. If you do agree, let me know if you think this is undervalued. But that's it for this video, guys. If you like the quality of this content, hit like. If you don't, leave some constructive criticism. Subscribe for more video updates. And like I always say, if you don't get with it, you will get left behind. Thanks for watching this video, guys. Catch you in the next one.